This is Cheap Seats. Vinny Romeo. Luca of your father. Hello, dear. Deal before fall. Hilarious. Hey kids, welcome to Cheap Seats. You know, puberty can be a tough time for anyone. Right, Jeff? I don't know, it's all right. Wrong, Jeff. It's a nightmarish war zone of hormones and humiliation, like an evening out with this woman. And sometimes the only way to cope with it is to sing a song about it. From Charlie Chaplin to Abraham Lincoln, puberty gives you awesome facial hair. Remember little Susie who you found to be icky suddenly makes you feel good down there. And that's what today's show's all about. Ah, puberty. Today we have our own very special tweener episode of Cheap Seats. Later in the show, we'll take you out to the 1989 Double Dutch Championships, but we kick things off with the Kids Putt-Putt National Finals from 1999 in Orlando, Florida. Putt-Putt certainly is a game for all ages, and last year, 12... And Harry Putter leads Gryffindor to yet another victory over Slytherin. Championship. After falling it's like outdoor Scrabble, only less exciting and more nerdy. Mounted an amazing comeback. Yes, we are victorious. Huzzah! The kids of Ypsilanti are back to... Freeze it. And at age 43, Eugene Cranus finally achieved his dream of making the putt-putt team. Mini John Daly. And a Shetland Mini John Daly. Ypsilanti up under the tee box next, James Mangan. I, I tell you, he is a... How much do you want to bet the design for the iron-on decal was this girl's idea? Coach and... Um, he's a real uh, concentrated putter. He's a concentrated putter? What the hell does that mean? If you add water to him, he can make up to 12 putters. With the ace for Team Ypsilanti, that puts them up... Is Richmond's E for effort? Is this one of those things where every kid's gonna get a trophy at the end? I hate that. Whoa, scoliosis. No, she just grew three inches overnight, and they didn't have time to get her a new putter. Here with the ace on four. Yeah, Dave, Mary is a great little putter, you know. Could you be more condescending? And Gallery growing. Number six, Kyle Farley. You know, Dave, we talked about the rhythm a little bit. I think somebody needs a bathroom break. That these kids are uh, alternating shots, which... Oh, missed it way wide left. What the... Ooh, with the ace, banking it off the back rail there, going in through the back door. Now can I go to the bathroom? No. It makes you uh, get a little nervous when that <laughs> ball is rocking back to the hole. Well, we've talked to these kids all weekend. They are nervous, but having a good time. Like David Crosby at a pharmaceutical convention. Has, as she tries to pull... How tall is she? 6'10". Can she dunk? No, and that's what's weird. Kids been playing this whole uh, off the banking here this week, Scott. Yeah. Well, don't be mad at them. They're just kids. Oh, and she's fairly new at the game. And oh, just a little bit. Off. Now maybe they'll send me to drama camp. And again, we have a lot of golf to still play here. Stephen Jones is going to come up and see if he can't uh, make the par for Richmond. Or perhaps to see if he can make the par for Richmond. Snapper. And he does it. What's this dude wearing around his neck? Was he a nom? Either that or it's his medic alert necklace. He's probably allergic to peanuts. And girls. That is a tough shadow to deal with. Will someone please tell Ben Wallace to take a few steps to his right? Uh-oh, swift boat flashback. These are kids under a lot of pressure right now, and probably a lot of it they don't necessarily... Wait, freeze it. Now, I think I know why this guy's moving the ball away from the rail, but I'd feel more comfortable if someone could give me a way too long explanation. You may notice here, Dave, that was um, uh, one of our pros uh, that was coming out there to measure the distance from the rail. There's a prescribed distance that uh, if the ball lands up against the rail, the ball needs to be moved out from the rail. It allows for the putter to move back and give the, the player an opportunity to hit the ball. Uh, and that was what that action was going on there. But now Thank you. The shadows too. Whose little there's... brother is this? Yeah, he so wants to be at home right now playing Grand Theft Auto. Too well here. This is about six feet. Oh. Tommy Stimson, not quite. Tommy Stimson? The guitarist from The Replacements. I knew he was young, but... ...for uh, Mary Walkley. No, Mary did uh, a real good job last year. She... Okay, that must be her coach. Let's listen in. All right, be the ball. 
But if I'm the ball, then I'll go in the hole. Shouldn't I be the club? Fine, be the club. See if I care, Amy. It's Mary. Uh, I don't think she wants to be here right now. That makes three of us. Stepping in, trying to give her a little bit of advice, some wisdom. His son Patrick doing very She has well. no idea what she's doing right now. Some of that here on Mary. Let's see if she can make this uh, fairly significant putt here. Yes, the future of our country depends on it. She's at an odd angle because of the rail. She can't really get her shoulders over the ball. Oh! Nowhere, and that's a, it's a tough miss. This oh, Mary, a it's a shame you'll have to die now. Soul. Last year, it looks as though it's repeating, not what they wanted to do. And Scott, He'll make it. You know, one thing you have what? Looks like Ipsilani Ipsa can't see, folks. Nice. More like Whoopsilani. Who's with me, folks? Okay, I'm definitely not with you. What a Gypsilani, folks. Get it in the hole, or you got some tough second shots. And here's the fifth one. Ah, just pick it up, kids. <sighs> there goes my mini golf scholarship to EMU. Could, could be a big swing. Since we are watching kids compete, we'd like to take this time to discuss the important issue of parents pushing their kids in sports. Listen up, parents. These kids are trying their best, and we feel like it's up to you to tell them that their best just isn't good enough. Sure, you push your kids to focus on winning to an unhealthy level, but are you pushing them enough? Not if that kid isn't winning. You know how many kids went on Prozac last year because their parents pushed them too far? Not enough. It's not a matter of trying to live through your kids. It's the more tragic possibility that if they fail, you will have to come to terms with your own failure as an athlete and as a parent. And that can't happen. Push them, people. Push them with everything you've got. The views expressed by Randy and Jason do not necessarily represent the views of Randy and Jason, but they do represent the views of this man. You can't be doing that 25 times a day, Jeff. You didn't think about that, did you, Jeff? No, you didn't, did you? But that's okay. Because that's what puberty and today's show are all about, Jeff. Growing up, Jeff. Jeff, when you do so, you'll find that in the end, you'll learn a lot more about yourself. But in moderation, Jeff. More than you ever imagined, Jeff. Let's get back to the action, Jeff. Through eight, Ypsilanti is leading by only two shots now. Perhaps we'll see... Where's this shot coming from? Yao Ming's shoulder cam? Nine. This is uh, Mandy Taylor. Oh, Mandy, you came and you aced without shaking. But we sent you away, oh! Mandy, Mandy. that was oh. awful. Didn't look too happy about that one. Not quite, and as we've seen all too often this week... Uh, slower, slower, slower. It doesn't quite make it. It rolls back and leaving uh, the person to clean it up with... Who's her stance coach, Jim Edmonds? Some of you trying to make up that distance. About five feet, man. <laughs> And Shetland Janice Joplin with the par. Of course she sunk it. She's got a three-hole course buried in her hair. Overcoming some of the nerves that they displayed early on. I think they are, and she knows that was a big putt for her team. If she Which one of these putts isn't big? Come on, announcers, control your adjectives. Well, for Team Ypsilanti, this uh, brings us to Patrick... Mc Where's this shot coming from? Earl Boykin's shoulder cam? And he does it with... Yes. Ace. He also came in first in the Crispin Glover haircut pageant. This is Mandy Taylor. See her. Whoa, Mandy. Well, you came and you missed every tee shot. And you've ruined our day, oh, Mandy. Disappointment for Mandy. I know each one of these kids hopes to make an ace on every... Slower, slower, slower. You know, when you have obstacles like this. Now, sometimes uh, uh, Amy now is getting up to the ball and... Uh, Not a lot she can do with this lead. And try and get it up close to the hole. But she could have done more than that. She's not even trying. ...about having to hit that ball very hard to be able to double... Back. Little big country into mop up. Setting up a similar shot that we saw... Uh, with uh, Team Ypsilanti, this is Stephen Jones hoping to... Stephen Jones, yeah, like that's his real name. I'm sure all these kids have motel aliases. It's standard for the putt-putt circuit. All right, fast forward. Really looking at the overall uh, score to see who's going to win this thing. Richmond with the advantage, leading on the back. Somebody want to get those bricks off the course? They're kind of in the way. As we go now to the final hole, 18. Team Richmond first to the tee. This is Mandy Taylor. 
And you've got... I think old Mandy needs to take out some of her frustrations on the putting range. And by putting range, I mean her little sister. A chink in the armor here for team... Mandy may look like a big loser here, but in the mid-90s, there were bigger losers in the world of mini golf. That's right, Rand. When an agreement between local mini golf courses and the JPA couldn't be reached in the summer of 95, all junior teams decided to lock out their putters. They kept the league going by bringing in scabs. This is the story of two brothers, bitterly divided. One a JPA all-star, the other a scab. One stuck in the sand trap, the other sitting pretty on the green. One... Randy? With a fairway wood, the other with a wedge. Just roll the piece. You know, not many 14-year-olds have seized glory on the hollowed links of the putt-putt course, but I am that man who was that boy. He's one of the greatest putters of all time, if you really want to break it down of all the players that have played this game. I think I knew it was a big deal when I saw Rachel Kopecky watching me at the 16th hole at Lincoln Hills. I double-banked a hole-in-one off the back wall, and she waved at me. Rachel Kopecky. Life was sweet before the strike. With a collective bargaining agreement in place and no salary cap, many questioned why the Junior Putters Association would strike at that time. They made us use colored balls. Now you tell me, would you play golf with blue balls? With their top players on strike, the JPA turned to scab putters. One scab in particular really drew Craig's ire. I, I can understand why he was upset. I mean, putting was my brother's life. It was like, for him, having that go down the way it did, that was like when Silver Surfer got banished by Galactus. But I know one thing. When I saw Rachel Kopecky waving at my brother, my, my ass was crossing that picket line. The strike was settled within weeks, but that was long enough for Carter, through his stellar play, to take Craig's spot on the team. And soon, Rachel Kopecky was waving her hand at another bogey, Carter bogey. I'm proud of the time I spent as a sanctioned strike golfer. Not a scab, mind you. Sanctioned, sanctioned strike golfer, all right? I mean, I hit, I hit seven holes in one in a row, which, I mean, Craig never did that, so sorry. He was wearing his celebrity so outwardly that he became a, a very polarizing kind of figure. You know, I mean, people either just hated him because he was a hot dog or loved him because of his style. Craig and Carter Bogey hadn't spoken in 12 years, but in the spring of 2003, they met again at a putt-putt charity event for Rachel Kopecky, who had been injured in a tragic waving accident. Things were tense until a revelation at the ninth hole. I just leaned over the ball and said to myself, John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, couldn't make this putt. And I was floored. I was like, D you read Justice League of America? And then suddenly, it was like we were 12 again, and the strike never happened. Forgiveness is a big emotion. I mean, you have, when you forgive people, you're able to grow. You learn from your mistakes. Tell you the truth, I'm glad it happened. I mean, my life may not be perfect now, but at least I got my brother back. Honestly, uh, Craig's a massive downer. I, I'd be totally cool not seeing that bitter for another 12 years. Oh, man. Dude. I'm right here. Damn it, you're such an They said, wow. Them for it. Just the facts, do you care? Do you care that in 1929, many golf courses were set up on roofs of office buildings in New York City for work-weary employees? Do you care that McDonald's, Holiday Inn, and Putt-Putt became three of the nation's first franchise roadside businesses? Do you care that the JPA was started by Don Clayton as he lay in a hospital bed after heart surgery in 1972? Jeez. The guy has a near-death experience and that's his vision? Hey, some people see God, some people see mini John Daly playing mini golf. Who are we to judge? Whoa, whoa, what do you mean, who are we to judge? We actually get paid to pass judgment on people. That's what we do. Okay, you're right. You're right. All right, it was a stupid vision. Thank you. Can I have my paycheck, please? Jesus. Roll of nickels. Good times. Good times. No pressure here on Team Ypsilanti, is there? <laughs> Why is that funny? Because there is pressure on Ypsilanti. <laughs> I still don't get it.
He needs an ace. Here, no pressure at all, Scott. Hilarious. Put it in the hole on one to get his team. Oh, is that what an ace is? Good thing we're getting down the jargon at the end of the match. Not a bad shot, but just a little strong. Just like the B.O. on the Ypsilanti bus after a long, deodorantless day on the putt-putt course. Some hugs there for Team Ypsilanti, some consolation hugs. So Ypsilanti just lost the civil war of putt-putt. Way to represent the union, guys. And if you uh, are watching this at home and you want to come out and try some of these shots, go to your local putt-putt. The holes are the same uh, every place. So this has just been one big infomercial for putt-putt. Try some of these shots from these angles. Uh, Freeze it. This you think things are bad for the Ypsilanti kids? Check out this guy. He bet on Ypsilanti and he lost his shirt and his shoes. And perhaps saddest of all, his ability to be served. This is a, a tough little putt she's got coming up. and She honestly just does not care anymore yeah, about anything. Year old, these kids, uh, Kyle okay, maybe I should ask her out now that she's vulnerable. Yeah, just fix my hair and she's fine. Some fun with her friends and there's always next year. When you're 11, there is always a next year. <laughs> Especially when your name is Danny Almonte. Uh, you'll see uh, Patrick here really wanting to make this and finish it up. Yeah, he wants to get home in time for Farscape. Yeah, shot up to the plateau. Make falls! Mick, yes! Have the bogey, but Team Richmond, an incredible comeback on the back nine. They do win. <sighs> Is this the type of future I can expect? The overall by being... Richmond, of course, will be enjoying the traditional celebratory yoo-hoo shower in the clubhouse. Ew. Question. Is there anything funnier than Dorf on golf? Yeah. Mini Dorf on mini golf. He's ten times funnier because he's ten times shorter. Science has proven this. It's Mini Dorf on Mini Golf. Flurgity flurgin. Oof. Mini Dorf on Mini Golf is not available anywhere. Hey, welcome back to our very special tweener episode of Cheap Seats. Let's shift gears in our final segment. Now, to some of you, double dutch means going out to dinner with Rick Smits and his brother and having to pay for your meal. But to us, it's rope jumping, it's dancing, it's the sport of queens. So without further ado, let's head to Boca Raton on the eve of the Double Dutch Finals. Take it away, former game show host David Sparks. Start walking now. Well, Pam, Larry, we have come to the end Paul of the Simon? Long day. Whoa, Garfunkel yeah. has changed a bit. We're at the breakfast table at 7 o'clock this morning. Right? Yes, we yes, definitely were. Somebody in this shot's now, overdressed. And if my math serves me, that's 13 hours of very hard work and an exciting day for sure. Very Pam, exciting. your teams did... I'm just well. going to keep talking right over you. In fact, didn't you break at least two records yes we did we had um two high school teams to break world records in the speed today black magic and master jazz and um, i saw black magic and master jazz open up for run dmc really where on vh1 freestyle was your event today larry yours and your teams did very well yes thank you we're very happy with that my mother said i would never amount to anything but just look at me now we'll find out later in the evening speed was the big event today eh? yes it seems mm -hmm. okay the bottom line is you Who would play larry in the movie version of this segment paul newman the sting paul newman older road to perdition paul newman split the difference color of money paul newman bingo we're gonna have a meeting of the minds and we're gonna talk about the errors that we made and we're gonna go back and we're gonna take a heart and an unnecessary push back into her face are the kids working this camera and come in ready get a little rest as and well get huh? a little rest okay how about you larry i noticed that you were talking to some of the judges apparently there was a dispute Yes, there was a dispute in our free... My mother said, never stop disputing things, and that's what I'm going to do. We're going to work on a dance step this evening, have them ready for tomorrow. May I take this last moment of this evening to wish you both very well tomorrow, and want to ask if you want to say anything to each other. I, I love you. you. Good oh. You. Take care. We'll this is you. awkward. Tomorrow morning at the ropes. And make the best See you at the ropes. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah, may not be so friendly tomorrow. Anyway, good luck to both of you. I'm going to bed. Thank you so much. I think that's how Walter Cronkite used to sign off the nightly news. And as they parted ways, one thing was for sure. They both believed Sparks to be a total tool. When it comes to freestyle, this team out of Henderson, Utah, is so good... That they're almost guaranteed a life in the Mormon circus. Just ask their 28 moms. They're known as the Henderson Hop. The what? The star attraction is young Jared Owen. A seventh grader who is a magnificent athlete as you yes he is magnificent the ozzy smith of double dutch i wonder if tanya megan and jared hang out when they're not jumping rope you know just sit around play some records maybe do a cucumber mask talk about what boys they like performs flawlessly under the pressure of competition 
Wow, this team must have had a big budget to be able to afford Jonathan from Who's the Boss. Does he have stick em on those gloves? Lester Hayes. This isn't the same Jared from the Subway commercials, is it? If it is, he's really lost a lot of weight. Don't try doing this unsupervised at home, folks. And boys, don't try doing this at school either, because you will get beat up. Fabulous. Jared's words exactly. Fabulous. Fabulous. Coach yes! 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 In your face! We have come to that part of the competition that we refer to as the double double dutch championships and over my show i think that's a double negative like in the super bowl shuffle when they said we ain't here to start no trouble i mean were they or weren't they there to start trouble hmm. if i put a shrinky dink in the microwave would i go back in time i wonder this is black magic high school watch it campanus the older jumpers are this is a really pleasant routine Wait a minute. Talk what the hell? Okay, this just got weird. I've heard about that move on Taxi Cab Confessions. And now I'm beginning to understand why they started the show with Jared. Yes. Wake up, dude. Does nothing excite you? They just Taxi Cab Confessioned it. Underneath and not quite. Jumping over in the ropes and a nice. Are they still going? No, this is just for them. Obviously. Are they still going? Yep. And even this part is better than Jared. Yes. Wow. Okay, that was definitely cooler than I thought it was going to be. I feel like the double dutch kids were way less wedgie worthy than the mini golf kids. Unless, of course, you were this double dutch kid. Yes. I now have a new reason for us to build a time machine. The old reason, of course, was so that we could go back to 1977, go on the gong show and break dance before anyone had ever heard of it. New reason, I want to go back to 1989 and give a wedgie to this kid. Yes. Me too, but until we get the flux capacitor fluxing again, we're just going to have to settle for giving out some cheapies. GB for least valuable shot, I gotta give mine to the entire Ypsilanti team on hole seven. They're like the 2004 men's Olympic basketball team, minus the expectations. I'm gonna go with this shot. Way too long, way too awkward, and poorly lit. It's like a Project Greenlight film with more believable dialogue. Well, that's our show, and I don't know about you, Jay, but I'm having a real hard time ending this show on puberty. Well, you know what I like to do when I have a hard time with anything? Lay down in the shower in the fetal position and cry, and... Sing a song? No, Jeff. I like to sing a song. Puberty is good. It's free. Everybody should. Everybody needs. Puberty is beautiful. It'll suit you soon. You'll see. I hope you dig it, kids. As much as me. Go! Yes.